My name is Kyle Del Moloni. I'm presenting the LC tank circuit of the AM receiver system. As we see here, we first determine the resonance frequency and we move on to determine the draft that we see from the AC suite given um, and noticing the resonance frequency, how it acts around it. Now we move on to, to see, uh, do a parameter sweep on the capacitor and see how that changes the circuit. Now this is important to understand how the tank circuit actually works. Moving on, we simulate the in AC analysis again, and uh, we pro after producing the um, the parameter sweep, and we notice here that um, as we increase the capacitive value, results in decrease in the resonance frequency, and um, adding a parallel the resistor to the LC design here, we see that at the resonance frequency, the capacitor and inductor configuration act as an open circuit, which means that there is a smaller frequency interval for um, the positive to negative phase shift, as well as a higher peak, which results in a smaller and a decreased bandwidth. And then finally here, if the resistor is moved on to be in series with the inductor, it seems like there is a plateau that occurs, which, uh, see, which acts like a low pass rhythm. What actually happens is that the resonance frequency shifts down, which results in what seems like there is a rise in the plateau, um, given the frequency change that we're doing. Oh, hi, my name is Arif, and I'm going to be going over the active filter. So the hand calculations were done by writing a system of equations for both in terms of IC2, since both transistors are connected. So once you find uh, the collector current for the second transistor, the other parameters uh, can be found easily through the voltage and current equations. The simulated values uh, were very similar uh, to the hand calculated ones with minor differences that we think are due, that are due to the non-ideal implementation of the transistor. And then next, the simulation um, of the small signal AC analysis. Um, we have that and then at the resonance fre frequency, we notice there is a glitch due to the fact that both the transistors are off and the output is solely based on the voltage division of R1 and R3. Next, uh, that's the modulated um, signal that becomes the input of the detection signal. And then once you look at the detection circuit, we can see the input is the modulated wave and the output is the demodulated signal. Hi, my name is Salam and I'll be going over the baseband amplifier. So going over how we designed the circuit, we were given the question point, so we know there should be a 3 volt drop between RC, RE2, and RE. Finding the corresponding voltages and using the IC value we were given, uh, we and using small signal analysis, we found RE, which gave us RE2 as well. And then writing a KCL, and assuming that R1 equals 50 kilo ohms, because we know that has to be very large, we got a value of 17 kilo ohms for R2. And for the capacitors, we wanted a very low impedance. So we chose a high capacitor values without compromising the small signal gain. Uh, for the differences between the values, it's not it's not very different. So and this is because of the non-ideal implementation of the circuit and the errors it might have. And for the, this is a for the oscillation over the oscilloscope. This is a, a input output uh, signals. So you can see the gain on there. And this is an AC sweep uh, over the given frequency. My name is Ahmed El Malawani, and I'll be showing our design for part B, question two, question three, as well as part C. So initially we calculated our resistor values, R15, R16, and R17, and we made a design assumption for R16 to be uh, to be big, so in this case 20 kilo ohms. For capacitors, we put it as 100 microfarads in order to minimize the loading effect, which is the role, load, the role of this capacitor in the circuit. And as we can see from our DC analysis, it is the values are very similar. Is only slightly different and that may be due to the non-ideal implementation of the transistors as compared from simulation to real life. Uh, in our in all of the uh, simulation, the red line is the uh, the input and the green line is the the output or output voltage. In uh, question three, we combine both the uh, circuits from question one and two. And for the input voltage, we put I put a voltage that is similar to the output voltage of the previous circuits. So then it will be very similar to when we combine everything and it provided this output waveform here. And then in part C, finally, we combine everything. And uh, when putting, uh, putting on the oscilloscope, we have our input voltages in, uh, is a moderated signal. And, an output, and the output voltage is the green line here, as you can see. Thank you for watching the video and have a good day.